Will America ever survive this horror of a financial collapse and find our way back to sanity, or will we descend into a dictatorship police state with the heavy hand of corporate control? Is it a done deal? The money printing only leads to empowerment for the 1% and massive inflation for the rest. The people who created our current system, don't do anything by accident. How long the gangster banks and our bought-off governments have been able to keep whole economies from coming unglued? The machinations, tricks, and deceptions the money changers are inventing to prolong their Ponzi scheme won't last much longer. There appears to be no end to their subterfuge. If you are at all paying attention, please prepare, the writing on the wall doesn't get any more clear. How severe this will be? Who knows? But I think it is better to be prepared than have the opposite occur. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. All the money printing, QE, central bank intervention, has completely obliterated price discovery, and also liquidity. Derivatives have done that too, along with money outside of the formal banking system. At some point, the entire market is going to wake up and realize they have no real clue what the value of anything actually is. Then, price discovery takes hold, and nobody but nobody will want to hold anything. The selling will not stop no matter how many times the market halts trading and attempts to allow it to restart. Fair value will be something well south of 95% down from here. For every stock on the planet, and most bonds as well will be obliterated. Nobody can possibly know what the trigger of any of this will be. Amazon, for example, isn't worth a damn fraction of a penny, given its pension for spending more than it takes in, and selling below their actual costs, on nearly every item, so as to knock out every single retail competitor. It's only through very corrupt accounting chicanery that Amazon ever reports any profit. It would be ironic if Amazon actually caused the market to crash. It's going to be something or someone you least expect, and no one would ever expect Amazon or Bezos to be the catalyst that somehow triggers panic selling, and causes all trust to be lost in the system and current beyond nosebleed market valuations. What the Fed is doing is not another tarp. The Fed is not swapping money for worthless collateral like in 2009. It is providing money, for nothing, to some big banks that are obviously caught in some sort of borrow short lend long scheme. Who gives the Fed the power to give away our money for nothing? Trump should be demanding the Fed only accept real collateral in exchange for these repo loans, rather than being forced to use the RICO laws to claw back some of our money possibly. Now the Fed, to justify the expected substantial exponential growth in the money supply necessary to bail out their banker buddies from interest rate derivative losses, can either, number one, start a war, which also allows the printing of quad trillions of dollars, or number two, they can move to make the economic numbers so bad and deflationary by manipulating the economy that it justifies an exponential printing of money. Either way, the intent of the Fed is to print massively. Hopefully, option two is the chosen path, we don't need a nuclear war. Besides, a nuclear war will also destroy the banker's Ponzi scheme right along with humanity. With massive exponential fiat creation to come. Who in their right mind is going to want to buy the bonds the treasury needs to sell to fund their budget, entitlement programs, perpetual wars, etc., if the T-bonds principle is destroyed by inflation? John Williams said, we are going to be entering a period of perpetual quantitative easing, money printing. That changes the ballgame, as we've known it. And the perpetual quantitative easing will not be limited to the US only. A worldwide debt rescue operation is now taking place. Ordinary familiar people need to get wise to what is going on fast. We have been told that what happened back in 2008-09 was the Great Recession. In reality it was a depression, because if it were not for the Federal Reserve along with other central banks printing trillions upon trillions of dollars, and the US government implementing its soup line programs, we would have seen the same chaos, as we did back in 1929. The whole thing was a lie to keep the entire Ponzi scheme from imploding. With the crop failures happening in the Midwest, and everything going on in DC, I think it has to come to a head sooner. The banksters are at risk for being captured now and it will fall apart faster as they get closer and closer to being exposed. But, with what is being done to this earth, with all the spraying in the skies, it might be best to get this over with. They are ruining the earth with all the chemtrails and these fires all over the globe. The longer the evil can do their harm, the more desperate and weak the people will get. So, in order to have a chance at fighting these people, it would actually be better if this happens sooner rather than later, I think. 
They are destroying the food supply on the earth and our capability to grow food. Like in the years preceding 2008, someone saw an opportunity in the market and created credit default swaps with the big banks, effectively insurance policies against the mortgage-backed securities. It made them an absolute fortune. This time around it's the corporate subprime bonds. Junk bonds level that are looking to be the catalyst. The big short 2.0 is in. Since 2008-09, it has never been a normal economy, not when you have a third of your workforce out of work looking for work. The inflation numbers have also been another giant lie as well. I tend to agree with John Williams who says, our real unemployment rate is around 24-26% and our real inflation rate is around 11-14% yearly. Two problems now, the good high-paying jobs people need don't exist to enable and maintain growth. And the problems created in 2008-09 are now 10 times worse. Inflation, deflation is a semantical argument. Like Jim Sinclair puts it elegantly, inflation is the creation of liquidity. Price inflation is the inevitable result of the increase of that liquidity. So we are in inflation no doubt, we see it in food, gas bills, water bills, increased fees for licenses, insurance. Deflation is the failure of financial instruments. And yes, we witnessed the implosion of OTC in 2008. But the massive printing will no doubt continue, no way they will taper, when he said they would get to the point where they have to end it, simply they cannot. No politician can stand the heat of tightening, so the end result will be hyperinflation. No nation I know of had walked this path and did not end in hyperinflation. They had the world reserve currency as a backstop, and they survived, now we are the reserve currency in question, and we have no backstops. No gold, no silver, no manufacturing. It is at this point a manner of deflation, which is the calm before the storm. Right now, there is no velocity in money within the economy, mimicking a deflation, because the Fed is paying interest, for the first time ever, on excess reserves to the very banks they bailed out, so it's a continuing scam, as an incentive to keep all these printed dollars contained and out of circulation. This is why we have yet to achieve virulent, runaway, and eventually hyperinflation. Some use the image of a big balloon containing dollars, which is currently being inflated in this new bubble economy driven by the QE process. I prefer to use the image of one of those big corrals, packed, and teeming with livestock in a stockyard setting such as Kansas City or Chicago. Either the balloon bursts or the corral fence is breached, and then the mayhem begins. So far, the balloon, corral strategy has worked, as the goal was always to stack the game in favor of the establishment wealthy over the middle class, using the bailout, QE stratagem, whereby those with means can acquire hard assets with the middle class's wealth, and when the scam is complete, or near complete, the bubble bursts, the corral is breached, leaving all of us suckers with worthless paper dollars in unimaginable and worthless volumes. They are about to force negative interest rates and flush out all cash digits out of your savings and checking accounts. That will trigger price inflation and enforce people to buy all kinds of stuff, but if you already have car, or new TV, or new stove, what are you going to buy? How about if you have few hundreds of thousands of dollars in savings for your retirement? What are you going to buy? Where is the only place you gonna put your money into? I think many will not have a choice but to go for gold and silver simply no choice the american people are not supposed to know what's coming this way the majority of the people can be taken by surprise and driven to ruin and chaos and disorder order out of chaos this place will become a third world country having been to a few i know what life is like in such situations and what better way to help the U.S. become the third world than by bringing in hordes of people from the third world, such as what's currently happening at the U.S. border. This will help to further collapse an already collapsing economy by burdening it with hundreds of thousands of illegal people who need everything. And notice how the U.S. seems to be going out of its way to make enemies all over the place, even with current allies. The U.S. is clearly aware that the world is changing fast, and every move it makes intentionally worsens the situation. It's as if things are being done strategically to accelerate the coming collapse. Actually, that is what's happening to bring about a new world order. They will succeed, and it will happen. Unfortunately, most Americans will never accept the idea of a currency collapse until it occurs and will be completely unprepared when it does. 
The vast majority of the population resides in the cities and has neither the ability or skills to survive but a few weeks after a loss of confidence in the dollar, regardless of how much food and bottled water one has managed to store. Life in the cities could become incredibly violent if essential infrastructure and supply chain systems break down and cannot be quickly restored. Martial law and other methods to control people could very well make the situation worse. At least from my perspective I would think to have a few acres somewhere in the boonies where fruits and vegetable can be grown year-round, a good water well, basic garden and hand tools, a propane generator and a large tank of propane would be much preferable and reassuring. A used mobile home can be purchased for as little as $20,000 for shelter. A pretty low price compared to what you have to lose. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.